I'll go ahead and introduce myself since we do have someone new today. Uh, my name is Mike Funt, and I am a professional performer and actor and, uh, and clown. And I uh, normally will teach uh, performance class um, and comedy writing. So we do some sketch writing and improvisation and, uh, and performance-based classes sometimes uh, for, this, uh, for this free uh, offering that we have. Um, but this time around, this month, uh, we're, we're offering something different just in the realm of creativity. So I am teaching a class in theme park design and development. Uh, I, in addition to having been a performer, I have uh, worked with developing attractions for uh, various theme parks and amusement parks around the country. And uh, a lot of that comes out of my storytelling background. So a lot of what we're covering is how to use storytelling in a way that the audience gets to just live the story or experience the story rather than simply reading it or uh, watching it passively, that the audience is actually a part of the story and they get to experience and live the story. So we have been talking about for the last couple of weeks about how we can take some of the storytelling techniques that we've used before and apply those to an experience that the audience gets to experience the story rather than just watching it passively or experiencing it passively however they are so that's who i am and that's what we're up to um so today i wanted to start a little bit differently because normally i'll give a little bit of a lesson and then we'll kind of work on it a little bit together and this time I wanted to start with the assignment and, uh, and then I'll go through the lesson that kind of illustrates that assignment a little bit, because I think that you all um, will be familiar enough with this assignment that you can go ahead and get started and be working on it a little bit as I talk through the lesson today. Um, so I have- Sorry, Mike, I think we have a question. I see a oh, hand up. Yes, sure. Question, go for it. Can you hear me right now? I can, I can yes. Oh, okay, so um, I wanted to ask, so are we doing like movie script right now? Or are we doing like a uh, book story? Uh, so it'll, it'll be either one. So that's, that's, a, that's what I'm getting ready to explain right now. So, um, so over the past couple of weeks, we've been talking about attractions and how attractions are designed in parks so that they are a storytelling experience for people. And last, last week we talked about coming up with an idea for the story and then the characters and, and then started developing some concept art and art for what the characters will look like, what the scenery will look like, what the line queue will look like, what the ride operators would wear. All of this is stuff that you have to think of when you're creating your, your visual literacy for your attraction. And so today we're gonna work on coming up with the story for your attraction. And I mentioned last week for you to be thinking about some characters that you have worked on in the past, whether they're your own invention or um, something that you've worked on uh, that, that's based on a, a different character that you, that you like watching. Um, but to think about characters that you know and can work with and try to come up with a story that is experiential for the audience. So instead of using your characters to make a comic book or using your characters to make uh, an animation, we want to use your characters to come up with an attraction. So they'll, the, your characters will be the star of the attraction that the audience gets to experience. So hopefully you've had a chance to think about that a little bit. If not, you'll, that's fine. You'll have some time to think about it as I'm talking and giving the lesson today. Um, but basically for today, I want you to work on coming up with the script for your attraction. So that is what happens from beginning to end and everything in between from the time the person uh, gets in line to the time they exit the attraction. Um, 
it does not have to be a modern attraction. It can be anything that you would like. And in fact, that's actually what the lesson is today. We're going to cover all kinds of different attractions. So that might help to give you some ideas as you're going along. Um, so uh, before we get started, I want to say that you, uh, to answer the question, you can write this in one of three ways. There are, there are many different ways you can write a, a script for a theme park attraction. I, I'm going to point out three, and you can use one of these three um, to, to do that. So the first one is we have here, I'm going to share my screen with you so you can see it. So this is the script for the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. Scott noticed, and I don't know, some of you might be able to tell, this shirt that I'm wearing is a bunch of scenes from the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. Um, so this one is written out just like a script, just like a pure script that you would write if you're writing a play or a movie or a TV show or a sketch. So you have the action that's in bold there, and then you have the, the dialogue. Um, there, you can even see there's little notes where there's a sound effect that goes on. Um, you have the characters and then the, the colon, which indicates that a person is talking. So you can write it like a script. So you can take your idea for your story and write it out as if you were writing a play or a movie, but in this case, it's going to be a, uh, an attraction. Another way you could do it, uh, this is, uh, this is the, the Voyage of the Little Mermaid. If you've ever been to um, California Adventure, there's the Voyage of the Little Mermaid ride, and this, gives you the information in more of a, a story or, or paragraph form. So instead of writing it like a script, you can just write it out like a story. The guests enter the queue line and they see blah, 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 blah. And then once they uh, step onto the ride vehicle, they enter into a world uh, where they are floating on the ocean. And then suddenly after passing by Scuttle, they go down into the water. So you can do it like that so that it's just a story that you're writing out. But again, you want to cover the beginning, middle, and end of the attraction from the time we step in the queue line to the time we leave the show building. Sorry and then, to interrupt. Uh, there was a question. Does it have to be a more modern attraction? Yes. Uh, so I did see that question. And um, the answer is it does not have to be a more modern attraction. Um, but in just a moment, the lesson that we're going to cover today is different types of attractions. So. Once we start going over the lesson, you'll be able to look at some of the different types of attractions and maybe decide what kind you would want your ride to be. So you don't have to have that decided yet. You can think on that um, as we go, and then you can add that into your script or your story uh, as we go. So the last thing, the last way that you can write the script for a theme park attraction is to use a storyboard. So how many of you, by show of hands, have done a storyboard before? Fantastic. I imagine most of you have. I think we've done storyboards uh, in other art classes here at the Chuck Jones Center. Some of the other teachers have done storyboards before. I think I might have even done a little storyboard, a mini storyboard lesson before. But just so um, you have it. Uh, so, uh, just so you have it, the storyboard looks like this. This is the storyboards for two uh, attractions. One is the Jurassic Park ride, the Jurassic Park ride that is at Universal Studios in Hollywood. There's also a version in Islands of Adventure in Orlando. But basically, again, you see at the beginning, number one is where we're entering into the queue line. We see where we, uh, we get onto the attraction. We see the different scenes that we're writing in the attraction, and then the culmination there at the end with number 13 with that final flume. Same thing here. This is, uh, let me shrink this down for you. This is the storyboard for the Spider-Man ride, the amazing Spider-Man ride, which is at Islands of Adventures in Orlando. Um, 
but this is uh, again you see at the beginning the audience the guests are in the queue and then you get onto the ride vehicle in that second frame and then you see the ride vehicle going through the various scenes and see what happens and then there at the end you see the exit queue where the guests get off the attraction so you can uh, let me go ahead and stop share there so you can either write your your story in the form of a script you can write it in the form of uh, a story or just regular paragraph form or you can make a storyboard to show us visually how your attraction would go and basically um basically if you're telling us the story again it's the same it's the same as if you were writing a story coming up with a story for your characters to be in a comic or coming up with your characters to be in an animated short or a, a television show whatever um it's the same same concept of coming up with a story the only additional element is that the audience is experiencing the story with the characters it's not just passively watching so the only difference when you're doing this kind of storytelling is to find ways to include the audience and to make the audience be one of the characters in this story with your other characters. So that's the assignment. And, and, the, and you can be working on that while we're talking here. Um, and uh, that's fantastic that you want to be a storyboard artist. That's, that's great. I have many friends who are storyboard artists, and it is a, it is a really cool job. Um, but uh, so I'm going to give our lesson and you can pay attention to the lesson and, and be drawing or writing at the same time, because basically this lesson is just going to be giving you ideas. So you can be working on your storyboard. You can be working on your script or your or your story, your paragraphs that tell the story of your attraction. And I will uh, I'll give you the lesson on different types of attractions. Um, because that might give you some ideas as you're working. So you guys can work on that. And then, and then at the end of the day today, we'll have some time to share. So hopefully at the end of the day, you'll be able to share with us some of the stuff you've been working on, your storyboard, your script, um, whatever you have. And it doesn't have to be finished. If it's not finished at the end of class today, that's totally fine. In fact, I don't even expect it to be finished. I would be really, really surprised if you got uh, the entire thing done in about 45 minutes. So um, you can show us a work in progress. Um, and in fact, that might even help uh, generate some ideas. It might inspire someone to go, oh yeah, that's a fantastic idea. What if, what if you add this? Or what if, what if they went this way and then you had that part of the story too? So don't be afraid to share us, share with us things that are works in progress. Um, so here, let me clear some of the things off of my screen so I can pull up our lesson for today. There we are. So let me just share this. Well, so I'm gonna be disappeared for a little while. Um, so while we're doing this lesson today, you won't see a lot of me because I have a lot of pictures to share with you guys. So here we go. This is our lesson for today. So we're going to go over just some different types of attractions. And this gets back to the question that was asked. Does it have to be a modern, um, does it have to be a modern attraction? It doesn't have to be. And there are actually really, really old types of attractions that have gotten really, really modern in the last few years. So you can do an old type of attraction that has lots of new technology. And, and because, uh, because that question was asked, I think I, I, I want to remind you that what we talked about last week, while you're writing your story, don't necessarily worry about the technical elements. As we're beginning to work uh, now, we want to stay in that blue sky um, mentality where anything is possible anything under the clear blue sky is possible anything that if you say okay so here is where the ride vehicle is going to skim across the water and it's going to float over the water and get over to this other little island and if someone says oh well how's how's the ride vehicle going to do that that doesn't matter uh, I, I said last week there's a, a very common expression in this kind of work that is 
the engineers will take care of that. So right now we're just worried about the creative part. We're just worried about the storytelling part. If there comes a thing where you go, oh, I don't know how I'd be able to do that. Don't worry about that just now. That the engineers will take care of that for you. And if the engineers say that's impossible, then we'll uh, then maybe you can modify your story a little bit. But the, when uh, there's a story of Walt Disney um, when he would he would have ideas for how a ride vehicle should go or how an attraction should go, and the engineers would come back and say that's impossible. We don't have the technology to do that. And Walt's quote was always, "I think it's kind of fun to do the impossible." So. Um, it might even be fun to kind of challenge your your engineers with your storytelling. So uh, going ahead and getting started, the first type of ride I want you to look at, these are rides we talked about last week. These are the out of the box rides, or sometimes they're just called carny rides or carnival rides. These are rides that you would see at any old state fair or um, carnival that's passing through town or something like that. These are rides that don't have any storytelling aspect to them. They just are a ride to ride for a, a, a quick thrill. And sometimes they're, you know, brightly colored like some of these you see here, but they don't, but there's no narrative, narrative to them at all. They're just a ride for the ride's sake. However, as we talked about last week, you can take an attraction like these uh, swings, um, this is just a, a, a wave swing ride that we talked about last week that was kind of a bland, boring ride at California Adventure for a while that got turned into the Silly Symphony Swings that now has a story to it. So you can take these out of the box rides and make a story to them as well. This is a perfect example. This is a regular gravity ride, free fall ride, where you take the guests up into the air and then at a certain point they drop and sometimes they bounce and go up and down a few times. But basically the thrill is that you are dropping from the air. So you have this free fall that gives you a little lift in your stomach that is exciting and that's, that's the thrill of the ride. Now this one, this is just an out of the box ride. This is a regular ride with no story to it at all. You wait in line, you get on the ride, you go up and down a few times and then you get off. No story at all. But you can take that same you can take that same type of ride and add a story to it at Universal's um, Islands of Adventure in Orlando. There's Dr. Doom's Fear Fall, which is the same kind of ride. It's still that same up and down ride, but there's a whole narrative in the queue line that builds you up to why you're doing this, that Dr. Doom is trying to power his new his new weapon of mass destruction on fear. And so he's putting people into this ride that makes them afraid or gives them, you know, terror. And so he's got to get the fear out of people so that he can use it to power his new uh, thing. So this is uh, an example of how you can take one of those out of the box attractions, give it a story, and now it's a themed attraction. Same thing with this ride. Some of you might recognize this one. This is a uh, uh, at many Disney parks, there, I think it's at, at least three, maybe even more than that. Uh, this is the Hollywood Tower Hotel or the Tower of Terror, uh, as it is known. Um, this is a ride that took the theme of the old television show, The Twilight Zone, and um, put that theme over the typical free fall ride and gave us a story or a narrative to this simple out of the box attraction. This ride now, has become whoop, has become the Guardians of the Galaxy ride in uh, in Anaheim. Uh, it's still the Tower of Terror in Florida and in um, I believe it's Hong Kong, but in Anaheim it's now this Guardians of the Galaxy ride. But same idea. It's this. It's the same ride, gravity ride, up and down, quick thrill. But now it has a narrative, and that's what makes it. Uh, a themed attraction and gives us a story to experience while we're riding the ride. Now, another type of gravity ride is this one, just a regular roller coaster. Uh, roller coasters rely on gravity. And the, this is the, your, your old fashioned wooden coaster. Wooden roller coasters have been around for over a hundred years. Um, and they operate on gravity because 
there's always, when you take a wooden coaster, there's always that first initial hill that tick, 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 tick. If you've ever ridden a wooden roller coaster, you, you know, you have that first big hill where you climb. And then when you go over that first hill, you go through the whole coaster. And on a wooden roller coaster, unless you have another section where the, the machine carries you up the hill, no hill can be taller than that first initial hill because, uh, because you're using gravity the rest of the way to go uh, to the end of the ride. So at, if you'll notice, if you ever see one of these old fashioned wooden roller coasters, you have that first initial hill. And then unless there's another hill in the middle somewhere that pulls you back up, there's no hill that's gonna be taller than that one because you're basically working your way down and you're letting gravity slow you down the whole way until you get to the end of the ride. As I said, these rides have been around for over 100 years. This one is the oldest one in North America. This is called the Jack Rabbit at Seabreeze Park, just outside of Rochester, New York. It was built in 1920, and it has been continuously running since 1920. Uh, there's another one in Santa Cruz, which is the second oldest in the country. If you've ever had a chance to go up to Santa Cruz in California, um, there's the Big Dipper, and that ride has, has been continually running since 1924. So these are two wooden roller coasters that have been continually going. They're, they're pretty sturdy. Um, uh, so that's, but that's a, a different version of a gravity ride, is a, roll, is a wooden coaster. Now, there's also a steel frame coaster. And the first one of those was this ride which is some of you might recognize as the Matterhorn, which is at Disneyland in Anaheim. And with the Matterhorn, you had, instead of a wooden frame for the coaster, you have a steel frame for the coaster. And that allows the rides to go much faster. And it also uh, allows for another exciting thing, which is loops. On a steel frame coaster, you can get loop-de-loops. It's almost impossible to have a wooden coaster do a loop-de-loop. -loop. I think there's one coaster that, that is a wooden frame coaster that actually does have a loop-de-loop, -loop. but it is, it's a big mess to try to, it's a, it's a big complicated structure to get a wooden coaster to do loop-de-loops. But with these steel frame coasters, we can get loop-de-loops and make it an even more exciting ride. But we're talking about storytelling on rides. Uh, just a, a fast roller coaster is not necessarily a themed attraction, right? You need to have a story there. And one of the ones we talked about last week, oops, I'll come back to that in a second. One of the ones we talked about last week was the Hulk roller coaster. Um, that one has, an, has a narrative to it that we talked about last week. And then recently, Disney's California Adventure um, put out a new coaster called the Incredicoaster, coaster which has a storyline based on the movie the incredibles it's a part of their new pixar pier so that whole area is all stuff that's themed around pixar and uh down in the bottom left there you see some concept art and we talked about concept art last week so that's concept art for pixar pier and then in the top right there you can see the actual Incredicoaster. coaster um, incredible themed steel coaster. Now, what's interesting about this roller coaster is that it is a steel frame coaster that's designed to look like a wood frame coaster. So here you can see that this, uh, in the foreground, there's a hill right there. And that hill is actually the first hill that you go up. And it's shorter than a hill further back. Uh, and that's because in the background there, that further away uh, hill has, again, it has that system and the mechanism to pull you back up. So that's why that's able to do that. So this coaster has the look of a wooden coaster, but it has the speed and the agility and the, the sharp turns and all of that that a, a, a steel frame coaster has. So you can get some of the, the fun aspects of both out of this coaster. And again, it's, it does have a story that's based on the Incredibles. So we have a narrative storytelling experience that goes along with the ride. It's not just a roller coaster. I did want to go back and talk about this. Um, 
this is a very specific kind of coaster that uh, some of you may have ridden before. It's called, it's called a wild mouse coaster. It's basically, it has a very small footprint. So it's, it doesn't go very far and the hills don't stretch out and go all over the place and then come out and back. It, so it's, it's kind of small in terms of its footprint, but it goes high like this. So you take, you take your ride to the, top of the, to the top of the coaster and then you just kind of make a bunch of little quick little switchback turns until you get all the way back down to the bottom. And this is called a wild mouse roller coaster. And again, at Disney's uh, California Adventure, there's a, there's a storytelling aspect to this where it's called Goofy's Flight School. So the idea is that Goofy, the Disney character Goofy, is training you how to fly, which is why you are having so many weird turns and, and uh, near misses and things like that. And so even something like a, a little mouse coaster, you can add a storyline to if you're, when you're creating these themed attractions, when you want to give the audience a storytelling experience, not just the ride. Well, that's our other coasters. Now, the next ride is probably the one that people are most familiar with at theme parks, which is uh, a dark ride. And dark rides, dark rides go all the way back to the 1800s. Even at, at county fairs and things like that, they would have these little rides where you have a, a small ride vehicle that doesn't hold that many people, on a track that goes into a ride building, which is why it's called a dark ride, because it's inside a building, so it's dark on the inside, so you can control all of the elements. You can control the lighting, you can control how fast they go through it because they're in a ride vehicle. You can control so much of the storytelling experience because it's a small ride vehicle that goes into a building where you can control all of the climate elements, the sound elements, the lighting elements, all of that stuff. Um, but the, the earliest versions of this was a type of ride called a tunnel of love. And it was called a tunnel of love because you would, it would be a, a little two-seater boat and you would go into the attraction and inside of the attraction, there would be, the theme would either be really romantic stuff that would make you want to cuddle with the person sitting next to you, or it would be really scary stuff that would make you want to cling on to the person sitting next to you. So they call it the tunnel of love because no matter which version they use, you are always cuddling up with the person next to you like that. Um, but there's so many versions of dark rides that we have. Anything from Mr. Toad's Wild Ride to uh, the Haunted Mansion. Um, I mean, there are tons and tons and tons of rides that we could go through that are dark rides where basically you take a small ride vehicle into a building and you, you ride out the story and then you exit the building. So, and this is probably the most popular type of attraction. And I talked to last week, the, the, the attraction that I was designing that I showed my concept art for was one of these dark rides, small ride vehicle of the stagecoach that um, is inside of a building so we can control all the elements and stuff like that. But those dark rides don't have to be small and simple. This is the Indiana Jones ride, which um, some of you may have ridden at Disneyland in California. Um, I believe it's also at a few other parks, but, I, but it's, it originated at Disneyland in California. Um, this is a, um, uh, an attraction that um, is fast paced, high speed. It's a real thrill ride attraction but it's still at its heart, just a dark ride. And for this one, I wanna share with you something a little different. This is, um, this is something that we, that we like to use when developing rides that, that gives you an idea of how, of how the ride works. Um, and it's called a ride through. And you can find ride throughs on YouTube all over the place. If you wanna, if you wanna see how any attraction works anywhere in the world, if you, if you say, oh, I really wanna see what the Haunted Mansion is like, in Hong Kong, you can see that. If you wanna see what the Spider-Man ride is like in Orlando, you can see that. Uh, if you wanna ride some of the rides from Tivoli Gardens, which is the, the park that we talked about the, in the first couple of weeks, the, the very first theme park, uh, you can go ride rides at Tivoli Gardens. But they're, it's just called Ride Through. You just type in the attraction you wanna ride and ride through and you'll find all kinds of stuff on YouTube. So to give you, and because the, um, 
Indiana Jones ride is, is a rather thrilling ride. Um, I thought that would be a good one to show you what a ride through looks like. So this, uh, this is a ride through of the Indiana Jones ride in case you've never gotten a chance to ride that for yourself at Disneyland. So let's see here, I'm gonna put that on full screen. And Whoop. All right, we'll pause there for a second. So that is, uh, that's what a ride through looks like. That's, whoop, I don't know. Um, so a ride through basically just is where you get a chance to take a visual ride through the attraction and see how the story goes, um, even if you can't actually physically be on the ride. And uh, so, the, the Indiana Jones ride that we just looked at again it's um, it's got a it's got a really clear narrative really clear story it's a high speed fast paced action adventure really fun thrill ride but it is at its core just one of those old fashioned dark rides same as the old tunnel of love it's got the same basic bones to it with a lot more technology um, oh yeah i see uh I see Lillian and Heather Rose had, had beat me to the punch in, in talking about the Guardians of the Galaxy ride. Uh, so let me go back to our uh, slideshow here. And so a, a specific style of boat ride that, or sorry, a specific style of dark ride that we see a lot in theme parks is a boat ride. And a boat ride, it works the same way as your, as your regular dark ride, except your ride vehicle is floating on water. And that just kind of, it gives the guests kind of a different experience. It gives you that nice floaty uh, sort of ride. Some of, sometimes the, the floating might be a part of the, the actual ride, like Pirates of the Caribbean. Obviously, you're in a little boat, like you're one of the, one of the pirates. Uh, down at the bottom there, that's the Monster Mansion, which is a ride that was at Six Flags in Georgia. And the idea is that this old house has flooded, this old house near a swamp has flooded, and it's been taken over by monsters. And so you get to go um, this one day out of the year, humans are allowed to visit. In fact, there's this song um, that it, there's this song that as you ride through the ride, it explains the whole narrative of the, of the attraction where it says, the monsters took over this mansion. Uh, 
humans are allowed to visit just this one day for the monster picnic. Uh, so you actually get to go see and, and hang out with the monsters. And then of course, because this is how attractions go is you start out having fun and everything's great. And the one thing they say is don't go towards the marsh. And of course your ride vehicle goes towards the marsh where the big, bad, scary monsters are. So there's the scary part of the ride. And then you're able to escape the bad monsters and get back to the monster picnic. And again, that goes back to our, our storytelling hero's journey thing of you start out in, in your regular world and then something goes haywire and you, you have to go off on this adventure and then you eventually come back to your regular world. Uh, this other boat right up here is uh, It's a Small World. Probably, probably the most iconic boat attraction. Everyone knows that little song. Um, so those are boat rides. And a specific version of a boat ride is a flume ride, which is a boat ride that ends in this, in this classic drop and big splash, where uh, at the end of the boat ride, you go down a big hill and you get, you get splashed with water, which can be a really fun thing to do on a hot day at a park. Um, but again, lots of flume rides, you go up and you go around and then you go down a big hill and it's a big splash. You probably have seen those kind of rides. I think there's one like that. It's at Six Flags. I think there's one like that at Knott's Berry Farm where it's just a, a straight up, you go up the hill, you come around a corner, you go down a hill, you get a big splash and then you get to be cooled off for a little while while you're at the park. But it is possible to add narrative because here, this is at Islands of Adventure in Orlando, Florida. This is Dudley Do Wright's Ripshaw Falls, which is a flume ride that's themed around the old Jay Ward and Bill Scott cartoon universe. So, Rocky and Bullwinkle, excuse me, Rocky and Bullwinkle, Dudley Do Wright. Um, who else? Uh, gosh, I can't even think of off the top of my head. Um, but uh, all, all of those old Jay Ward and Bill Scott cartoons they kind of play around and, and act out the story for this ride. So even though it's a basic flume ride, again, you can still add a narrative to one of those old timey rides and make it really much more of a storytelling experience for people. Another classic version of that is Splash Mountain, which is at Disneyland at, and at a lot of Disney parks. This ride is currently themed to um, some of the characters from Song of the South. It is uh, it is going to be undergoing a facelift very soon and be themed around characters from the princess and the frog. So right now it has this one story and they're going to keep the same basic bones of the attraction and just give it another story. So that's a great way of illustrating how it doesn't matter what the attraction is. You can, you, you can always overlay a narrative or a story on top of it. Um, so this ride is going to, like I said, it's going to remain the same in its basic structure. They're not tearing it down and building a whole new ride. They're going to keep the same basic structure of the ride and just give it a new storyline, uh, a more modern storyline. Uh, same thing happened here. We had, this is now called the Jurassic World ride. It used to be called uh, the Jurassic Park River, River Rapids ride or something like that. Um, but it used to be themed around the old Jurassic Park franchise. And then obviously they started the new Jurassic World franchise. So they updated it with some more stuff. And again, it's the same ride, but they've just given it a, a new story and they've given it some more modern technology and, and updated the, the, the attraction a little bit to make it more modern. And now we have a, uh, a new storytelling ride on the same bones of an, of an older attraction. So then we have, uh, we're almost to the end. We have simulator rides, which is where you, you don't really go anywhere. You sit in a, in a room or in a, or in a ride vehicle that doesn't move. And there's some sort of screen in front of you. Sometimes you might wear 3D glasses to go along with the screen. Um, but you, you are basically sitting in a, in a stationary room or vehicle and it kind of moves you around and jostles you around so that what's happening on the screen seems to happen uh, with you. And so Despicable Me at Universal Studios is, uh, is a really good version of this, uh, the Minion Mayhem ride. Uh, also Star Tours, this is probably one of the earliest versions of this ride um, that, um, that we have. 
Um, Star Tours has been around since the 90s, I think, and one of the earliest versions of this kind of simulator ride. It got a, it got a facelift about 10 years ago, um, and it changed uh, the, the way it looked and, and how you experienced the ride with the 3D glasses and all of that stuff. So Star Tours has been updated as well to be a, a more a technologically advanced simulator ride. And then you have a lot of rides nowadays that are starting to mix technologies and mix styles because the technology has gotten so advanced that now you can combine a lot of these things. So there are some really fancy high tech rides that, uh, for example, this is um, Harry Potter's Forbidden Journey, which is at uh, Islands of Adventure in Universal Florida. I think it's in, um, it's definitely in Universal Hollywood, and I think it's also in Dis or not Disney, uh, Universal Singapore uh, as well. I, it's, I think it's in one of the Universal Asian parks, but this is the, the Harry Potter ride, and it's basically a dark ride, but it also is a simulator ride because there are some parts of it where you fly and you're going through and you're moving along with a screen, but then you're also you come back and there's actual physical elements that you're flying with as well. And you're on a, you're on a small ride vehicle, you're in a dark room and all of this stuff. So it is a dark ride, but it's also a simulator ride. So you can, you can think about combining those technologies as well. This is uh, two other rides that are similar. The amazing adventures of Spider-Man. It's a really cool ride. It's at uh, islands of adventure in, in Florida. And this is another ride that combines live action elements, as well as screen elements and you wear 3D glasses to look at the screen. So it looks like you're traveling through the cartoon, um, the comics of Spider-Man. Um, but this is a simulator and a dark ride at the same time. And there's, uh, there's a, if you've never had a chance to ride this ride, it, it's one of my favorite theme park attractions of all time. There's this one part at the very end where it, you're, because of what's happening on the screen and the 3D glasses and the way the ride vehicle is tilted, uh, it, it simulates you're falling off the top of this really, really tall building and it looks like you're going to hit the ground and right at the last second, Spider-Man flips out a web that catches you and it's so scary. Even though I know I, I've been on the ride so many times and I know how it's made, I know how the effect is, uh, is done, it still scares me every time. I still shake and close my eyes because I think we're going to hit the ground and Spider-Man saves us at the last second. Um, and then uh, a new ride, fairly, it, it was really quite new right when the pandemic started um, called Rise of the Resistance, the Star Wars ride at uh, Disneyland. It's also in uh, Disney World in Florida. Um, and it's, uh, again, it's, it combines live action elements with um, traditional dark ride elements with um, some uh, simulator ride as well. Um, yeah, uh, Jay, which, which one were you talking about the tech was super epic on? You can just type it if you want. Oh, the Harry Potter. Yes, yes. The technology on that one was when Harry, when that Harry Potter ride came out, it was unlike anything anyone had ever seen before. Um, but the, the Star Wars Rise of the Resistance ride is interesting because it's now using um, this trackless technology. So dark rides that don't have, um, that don't have a track, that they're programmed to follow sensors in the ground. So you can actually have an even crazier experience because it doesn't have to follow a track. You can actually make the program the cars to go and do different things. And there's uh, the Rise of the Resistance ride that does that. There's the um, there's the Ratatouille ride at Disneyland in Paris that has a trackless system. There's um, there's a, a ride that was in development for a while um, that was based on the Aliens franchise that that was really scary. Um, and, uh, and again, it uses this trackless system. So now we can actually have dark rides that don't even need a track, that you can just move throughout a space um, and just have the, the car, the ride vehicle programmed to meet up with certain sensors on the ground. So you don't even have to have a track. And that's, that's really cool. It opens up to a lot of potential. And again, 
if, if someone had pitched Rise of the Resistance five years ago, the engineers would have said, that's impossible, we can't do it. But we remember Walt's quote, it's kind of fun to do the impossible. And now we can do a lot of those kinds of things with, uh, with an attraction like this. So the, the last section to cover is, uh, let me make sure I'm, I'm good on time. Okay, good. So the last section to cover is transportation rides. These are rides that just get you from one part of the park to another. And they don't necessarily have to uh, be thrilling. They don't necessarily have to be fun, but they, they serve the purpose in, in getting you from one place to another. So these like sky bucket type of rides are an example of that. But again, just like I've been saying all along, it doesn't matter the type of the attraction. You can, um, you can add a layer of storytelling to it. So the Wedway People Mover was an old attraction at Disneyland and at Walt Disney World that had this theme of the tomorrow, the whole Tomorrowland aspect and the, 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 the way of moving people for the future and all of this stuff. And then even something like the monorail, uh, you add this uh, storyline of Tron to it, which they did a few years ago when the new Tron movie came out. And you can have something like the monorail, which is really just to get you from one place to another. Uh, that ride can even have its own storyline. So it, again, the main thing to, to take away from this is it doesn't matter what type of attraction that you're looking at. It can be, it can be a storytelling experience for your guests. Even something like the monorail, which is its main uh, job is to just get people from one place to another. It's, it, it, it's not about the type of attraction. You can, you can put a storyline onto any of these. Um, and then we have shows. You can have shows that are live shows, like in the top right, that's the Beetlejuice show at Universal. You can have automated shows like the top left, that's the Carousel of Progress at Disney. Uh, in the bottom left, you have the stunt shows, which is where, which involve fighting and falls and explosions and things like that. That's the Batman stunt show at Six Flags. Um, but there are lots of other stunt shows at other, at other parks. There's the Indiana Jones stunt show. There's the Wild West stunt show at Universal. Uh, MGM Studios has the, uh, the Indiana Jones stunt show. Uh, and then you have a show like Fantasmic, which is in the bottom right there. If you've never seen Fantasmic at any of the Disney parks, it kind of combines all of that. So there's a live element to the show, there's an automated element to the show, and there's a stunts element to the show. Um, and then the last attractions are, uh, I don't even have any pictures for, I think that might be the last one. Oh, no, yeah. So the last attractions uh, are parades and fireworks shows. So parades and fireworks shows are just kind of specific versions of a show. and um, and they can even have their own stories as well. There's the, the Pixar parade, uh, the Pixar play parade, I think it was called at, at California Adventure for a while. There's the, uh, the electrical light parade at Disneyland. Um, the fireworks shows uh, at Universal often have a theme to them. So even something uh, as simple as a parade or a, or a fireworks display can also have a storytelling aspect to it. The last thing I wanted to talk about, the last thing I want you to think about before um, finalizing your thoughts about your, uh, your attraction is this, if, if you know anyone who went to Disneyland back in the 19, anytime before the 1980s, it used to be that when you would go to Disneyland, you would pay to get in. And then instead of just being able to ride everything, um, you you would pay a small fee to get in and with that small fee you would get this booklet of tickets and the tickets were good for different kinds of rides so you had a tickets b tickets c tickets d tickets and they were good for different kind of rides the a tickets were for your very very simple rides so you see like the carousel and walking around sleeping beauty's castle or the um the horse-drawn carriage uh, that takes you down Main Street, USA. Then your B-level tickets, you have your kind of kiddie rides, like uh, Alice in Wonderland or Casey Jr.'s Train, the Swiss Family Robinson Treehouse, things like that. 
then you get as you move along through the book and you get further down through the letters you get the the, the more exciting rides like Mad Tea Party and the Dumbo's Elephants. And then you get down into the D rides. That's where you get to the Mark Twain Steamboat and the Mine Train Through Nature's Wonderland, uh, the sailing ship Columbia, uh, which Scott saw me at the other day. Um, and then the, the, the most coveted parts of those ticket books were your e-tickets. Um, and your e-tickets were the, the fastest, most thrilling rides. And so this is, I don't know what year this is from, it's uh, after 1959. So I would say this book is probably from somewhere in the 60s, the 1960s. But um, with your e-tickets, you could ride the Matterhorn bobsleds. You could ride the uh, Mine Train Through Nature's Wonderland, Submarine Voyage, the monorail. Um, if, if, if we had one from the 1980s, this is where you'd be able to ride um, Space Mountain. The, the e-ticket would get you onto all of your, your fast, thrilling rides. And so even though Disney stopped using that system a long time ago, all theme parks still use those descriptors as describing um, the types of rides. So if, if you're designing an attraction that's like an easygoing, um, you know, very calm, maybe even just kind of a transportation ride to get you from one place to another, you would say, okay, this ride is gonna be an A ticket ride. And if it's kind of a, a kiddie ride, that's a little exciting, but not, but not you know, really out there in a thrill ride, but for little kids can ride it, you would say, all right, this, this attraction is gonna be a C ticket ride. So, um, and then of course, if it's gonna be a really exciting, cool, um, fun attraction, then, uh, then you would call it an e-ticket ride. And in fact, there's a magazine that's all about theme park design. If you're, if you're in the, um, the world of theme park design, there's a, a, a what do they call it? A, an, an industrial magazine, an, an industry magazine, uh, an industry publication uh, that, that tells you what's going on in the, in the world and uh, what's going on in the world of theme park design and the technologies that are out there. Um, but that magazine is called e-ticket. Um, so we still use this a-ticket through e-ticket system to classify what the thrill level is of a ride. So just something else for you to think about as you're coming up with your attraction is uh, what, kind of, what kind of ride do you want it to be? Do you want it to be an e-ticket ride? Or do you want it to be a ride that, that the whole family can ride together so it's more of like a B or C ticket ride? That's up, to, that's up for you to decide. So do you want to have an e-ticket ride or an a-ticket ride or anywhere in between there? That's just uh, another thing to think about when you're coming up with your attraction. So uh, the question is, uh, does it have to be a ride? No, it doesn't have to be a ride. We, we, as I've shown, there's many attractions that you can have that um, are storytelling experiences for your audience that aren't necessarily um, a ride per se. You can have uh, it, it can be a show, it can be a parade, it can be a walkthrough attraction, it can be, um, you know, we, we're, we're, we've been focusing on uh, attractions that are at um, ride parks, but, uh, but as I've said, um, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, it can be a, a circus thing. So um, anything that's a, a dedicated space um, that has a, a themed element to it. So we've talked about how zoos, um, some malls even, uh, there are restaurants. That's another thing. You can, you can create a storytelling experience out of a restaurant. We didn't even, we didn't even talk about that, but they're in so many of those parks, they also have restaurants that are themed and have their own storytelling aspects. And then there are themed restaurants that are outside of parks, you know, the, something like Hard Rock Cafe or Rainforest Cafe or something like that. They all have their own little narratives and themes as well. So um, yeah, if you have an idea for something to do with circus, absolutely go for it. I, uh, I personally have a special place in my heart for circus. So uh, if you have an idea for that, absolutely go for it. Um, but the, the main idea is just that we're creating a, a, a storytelling experience where the audience experiences the story. And you can find those in any type of attraction. And hopefully today, 
with what we've been over, you've been inspired. Uh, you now, you've now seen a whole bunch of different kinds of attractions that you can utilize. And we've talked about e-tickets and a-tickets and what level of thrill we want our ride to be. Last week, we talked about concept art. Before, we talked about story and how story is king. Um, yeah, Tiki Room. Tiki Room is, a, is an automated show, exactly. Uh, but as we talked about last week, it was also supposed to be a restaurant at first. Uh, but it is an automated show, and it's a, it is, as Scott says, a fantastic way to cool off around uh, the, the 2.30 or 3 o'clock point during the day, uh, during your day at a park. Grab yourself a, a Dole Whip ice cream and uh, settle down in the tiki room and chill out for a little while. Um, okay, so we're at time. I do want to leave, I, I want to, before we head out today, I want to make sure if anybody has anything they want to share before we go, if you've been working on anything while I've been talking, um, if you have something you want to share, you can just raise your hand and share it with us. If not, that's totally cool. We will have time to share next week as well. So I see Jay has a hand raised. And then Kat after that. Hello. I was just working on a drawing sort of yesterday. I just basically drew everybody else's characters. So yeah, these are all characters made and owned by people in this class. So. Oh, cool. Very cool. Fantastic. Thank you. That's great. The, um, I, I, think, I think by the end of this, you should all like create some sort of model sheet for each other. So you can all, you can all do each other's characters. I have a part of a storyboard. So the idea is this is like, um, is I guess one of those like half um, ones on the screen and half like physical elements maybe. Mm -hmm. And so the idea, this is like not dark, but like tad dark, but not really dark. It's like mm -hmm. the Hulk right almost. Uh, so the idea is there's this, well, mom, I guess, and the, the little girl here, and it's like a daycare, but I was too lazy to draw in a background. And then the lady takes her to get a snack, and she sits, and the lady goes away, and then there's this, like, zappy thing, and then you turn into a la an axolotl dragon, which... <clears throat> That's as far as I've gotten with the storyboard. Well, that that's that sounds cool. I'm I'm excited to see where that goes. That sounds like a lot of fun. And yeah, you can uh, when you're first starting out with your storyboards, you can quickly do a little draft of something just so you get all your ideas out, and then you can go back and put in those, uh, you know, put in your daycare and stuff like that after the fact. Uh, so I saw Liliana and Heather Rose, and then uh, uh, Mila is raising her hand, I believe. Uh, I here's drawings of some characters that the others made. Excellent. Whose character is that with the duck on their head? I recognize that from the other one as well. Um, this one's Jay's and this one's Tater Tots. Very cool. Excellent. Well, first of all, I also wanted to show my drawings. Very cool. And then also I was thinking, I don't actually have any art for the ride yet, but I was thinking of making it kind of like a video game ride where there are different sections of the ride and each section is a different game. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, there, uh, there are some rides like that uh, and, and rides where you can play video games in them. It's like the, there's a, Toy Story Mania, um, where you can play digital versions of uh, like carnival games. And then there's Buzz Lightyear Astro Blasters, where you, you shoot a bunch of stuff. Uh, and then there, there are attractions like, um, uh, what is it? Men in Black at, uh, at Universal Studios, where you have to try to shoot all of the aliens and you catch the aliens. Um, and then, and then there's an, actually, there's a, a brand new ride, um, at, um, 
Disney's California Adventure that's a Spider-Man ride. It's not the same Spider-Man ride that I was showing you pictures of before. It's a brand new Spider-Man ride where you where you shoot webs at uh, these um, wayward robotic spiders. So that's really cool. You can use um, you could you could do that where you have different types of video games that you go through, and then you you could include technology where you could actually play the games as you're as you're going through them. That would be really neat. Excellent. I love that. That's great. And then Mila, uh, did you have something you want to share? Uh, yeah, it's a script. Ish. Cool. It's not done yet. Um, I'm going to share a screen. If I can. Go for it. Uh, so I'm just going to talk through this because it's pretty long. I had an idea of using holograms because circuses, I'm not saying that they're limited or something, but um, there's been so many of them and they've been here for so long that um, it's like there's this certain list of, you can create a list of things that can be done in a circus and the name here is like the circus of the impossible. Sorry, it's in French. <laughs> um, so holograms could, I'm not sure how they work, but possibly in the future, something similar to a hologram if a hologram doesn't work, but um, that could be like a tool to make something that seems impossible, but now it's not. Absolutely, yes. Uh, we, that's, that's one of the times we would say, let the engineers take care of that. Yeah. We're, we're, we're just gonna assume that we're gonna have holograms and, and there, are, there are smarty pants people who will figure out how that's gonna happen for us. I'll take like a little more so that people could finish if they're not done yet. Yeah, this looks fantastic. This is a really fun, fun little setup. I like this a lot. I might make like a storyboard or concept art or something. Yeah, that would be really cool if you if you have some time between now and next class, if you wanted to draw up, especially like the the lion uh, ringmaster character if you wanted to show us what you're thinking what uh, that character might look like or even you know just a, a, a mock-up of what the feel of the arena would look like uh, again that's if you have time you don't have to I was uh, I don't know if, anybody, about it if you can't I don't know if anybody knows this circus but like google it um, I was inspired by Cirque du Soleil because it's like one of my very favorite ones so yeah I'll just stop sharing because it's too long. <laughs> oh, very cool. That's fantastic. I, I hope you flesh this out a little more and, and hopefully by next week we'll have uh, a, a few uh, more well-rounded uh, attractions from you, from you all. Um, let me see. I'm just reading Tater's thing over here in the chat. Oh, yes. Yeah, uh, Tater is giving some examples of different versions that you could use if, if not uh, a, a pure hologram, you could use uh, some sort of projection or map projection or even even the, the like Pepper's Ghost technique that they use at uh, in uh, like Haunted Mansion and things like that. But yeah, excellent. Well, these are fantastic, everyone. And uh, we're, we're running a little bit late. So I want to I want to be respectful of everyone's time. So thank you all for sharing your work. And, and please continue to, to work on these if you have time during, out, during the week. And if not, next week we'll have some more time to work on these and flesh them out a little bit. And uh, if you don't have anything yet, uh, keep thinking of how you might use your characters or other characters to create a storytelling experience for your audience. Um, but I, I really appreciate everyone's work. and I, And I... Look forward to seeing you all next Thursday. Next Thursday will be our last in this series of theme park design. Um, but, the, but there will be plenty of other stuff to work on. But we'll see you next week. And uh, have a good week between now and then. Oh, and donate, donate if you can. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Mike. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Bye.